It's already the middle of May and I've camped 48 nights already. Stay tuned to this week's episode of Tab Talk where I'll share the first 10 campgrounds I've stayed at in 2023. And also, if you stay tuned to the end, you'll hear tips about the campgrounds I choose, which apps, what I look for, and how I search for them. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jen Grover. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and thank you for stopping by. I hope that you find the content in this video helpful. If you do, I'd encourage you to go ahead and hit the thumbs up and subscribe. If you click the little bell by the subscribe button, you'll be notified when I post new content. For those of you who've been around for a while, let me say this isn't the first time I've tried to post a full-length video this year. I actually have done three others that I was trying out new technology with that were, shall we say, not successful experiments, and so they didn't ever come to life. So here I am, it's mid-May, and my apologies for getting to you so late. That doesn't mean I haven't been camping, however. I've been on the road for 48 nights this year so far. It'll be 48 as of actually tonight, and it's been a great spring. The weather has been perfect for me. Uh, providentially, I've been in the right place at the right time to enjoy my favorite spring weather, which would be, you know, not too hot, cool overnight. Early spring, it was even down into the 20s overnight, so I totally love that. And it's been just a great spring. I, I'd be curious, have any of you done spring camping this year? And have you run into any cooler weather? Or has have you run into any severe weather? You know, we talked about that on a video last year. And if you haven't seen that one and you're, you're new to travel or new to RV travel, then you're going to want to watch it because I interviewed a meteorologist and we talked about what you need to know as an RVer with weather. It's a really important video and it's something that I hope all of you have a plan for. The link for that is above my head here and I think you'll find that really an interesting conversation I had. So back to this year, I have been to 10 campgrounds already. I've spent a couple nights mooch docking and a couple nights at new camp doing some things, but it's been a really 10 great campgrounds. I can't complain about any of them. And so I've posted pictures and I've posted some reels and YouTube shorts that show locations, but I, I rarely tell you where I am while I'm there because honestly, it's just not the safest thing to advertise where you are. I do sometimes, but as a rule, I try to wait until I'm done with a location before I share. And sometimes I don't share the location because I don't want it to become too popular. But in this video, I'm gonna share all 10 of my first campgrounds for, for 2023. And what I liked about them, what, what I didn't like about them, and I hope it's helpful for you. But if you stay tuned until the end, I'm gonna share about the tips about how I find a campground what apps I use, how I go about searching, what I look for. And then on top of that, I'm not the greatest at finding campsites within a campground. I have friends who are better at it than I am, but I'll share what I look for. And then hopefully others will share how they search and what they look for when they're looking at a campground to find the right site. So before we jump into those 10 campgrounds, let me give you just a short video recap of the entire spring.
I hope you enjoyed that little montage of the spring travel I've had this year. If you like it when I include those, let me know in the comments below. They do take some time and effort, and if people don't find value in them, I'll, I'll stop doing them. The first campground I'm going to highlight is the Withville KOA. Now, I spent one night there because I was on my way to South Carolina, but the one night was, I really got a great impression of this campground. Now, I know some of you are sort of rolling your eyes at a KOA. Bear in mind, I rolled in around eight or nine o'clock at night. It was dark because it was early spring. I just needed an easy pull through site with electric. I could have, could I have done a, a Cracker Barrel? Sure, I could have done a Cracker Barrel, but I had not dewinterized yet, so I wanted somewhere where I had easy access to bathrooms, and the Withville KOA had it. I spent the night there. When I woke up the next morning, I, I saw how pretty it is there down at the base of the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's right off I-81 and right where Tennessee and Virginia intersect. If you continue south, you can either go toward Mount Airy, North Carolina, or you can take I-81 down toward Johnson City in Kingsport, Tennessee. That's a great place because not only is it convenient to the interstate, but you are convenient to a couple of restaurants, like there's a Cracker Barrel there, and also gas, easy on, easy off. So what did I like about the KOA? It was very, the sites were were pretty. It was, you know, green. It was even early spring. It was green. It was right amongst the mountains. It was peaceful. It was easy to deal with. And the price wasn't too bad. It wasn't cheap, but it wasn't too bad. I want to say it was somewhere in the 40s or 50s. Your prices are always going to, people say, how much did it cost? That price is going to vary depending on the site you pick, depending on the time of year you go, depending on the day of week you choose. Um, they, they are, the systems that these campgrounds are using are getting smarter. And so the prices are not always going to be the same. So I'm really hesitant to quote a price. It's really, gonna, your mileage is going to vary. Their app is super easy to use at the KOA and I recommend downloading it and you can model the pricing for the night that you want to be there. The second campground I stayed at, at the time was called Carolina Pines. It's now called Sun Resort Myrtle Beach. And it's not actually in Myrtle Beach. It's sort of between Myrtle, North Myrtle Beach and Conway, South Carolina. So it is a tourist destination. Not my typical fare, I will say. It is a full-on camping resort. Um, beautiful swimming pool, beautiful. Fa the facilities are beautiful if you like that type of environment. And by that type of environment, I mean resort geared toward families, geared toward entertainment. They had um, different things going on at the resort on different nights. They had a nice restaurant in the campground. Um, and quite honestly, I just needed a break from months of brown we didn't have much snow in Pittsburgh this year and it was March and I was ready to camp so I wanted to go somewhere I could dewinterize and South Carolina fit that bill that is a pricier campground however I will tell you if you look around I can't remember if it was Black Friday or Christmas they do run these big promotions where you get significant discounts on your sites so look out for for that sale you can sign up for the Sun Resorts emails and that you'll get a list of all their resorts, not just Carolina Pines. The one thing about Carolina Pines that was nice was that the sites were actually not too bad. They were pretty decent size for a camping resort. I also love that the facilities were spotless. Um, it's a gated campground, so it was very secure, and I really thought it was a great place to work. As far as data speeds, the data speeds were okay there. They weren't fantastic. My friend Alan shared his Starlink with me a couple days and that was superb, fantastic. But for the most part, the data speeds, the Wi-Fi was, was okay. And I think if you were there when it was full, the, the Wi-Fi would struggle. That being said, they were doing work to upgrade the Wi-Fi capabilities while I was there. So it may be better already.
the next campground I stayed at, I booked for one night. And when I booked it, I thought about booking it for the week. And I thought, I'm going to hold off and see what the weather's like, see if I like the campground. And that's the Fancy Gap KOA in Fancy Gap, Virginia. What I liked about the Fancy Gap KOA was that it was literally a half mile from the Blue Ridge Parkway. I mean, the property butts right up against the Blue Ridge Parkway. So you're right in the Blue Ridge Mountains. It's beautiful. It's, it's southwest Virginia. And it was, again, early season. So there weren't leaves on the trees. The mountains weren't at their best. But it was still wonderful. There was nobody around. The campground was pretty empty. The Blue Ridge Parkway was not at all busy. So I was able to roam that and just enjoy some solitude that you don't typically get to enjoy in those locations. I really enjoyed stopping by the Maybury Mill a couple times and taking some photos. And just being in the mountains really was, um, it just felt great. I can't tell you how energized and recharged I felt after spending the week there. I, I really liked that campground. It was small. I the price for when I was there in March was very cheap. I think it was in either the 20s or 30s per night. So I hear sometimes people say KOAs are always expensive. They're not always expensive. They often are, but not always. Um, this campground, the people who run it do such a fantastic job. They're very friendly. They have great barbecue. They'll deliver right to your um, camper. I had pulled pork sandwich a couple times. And they're it's just a lovely place to be. I really enjoyed the sunsets there and the sounds of nature in that early spring season. It did get down in the 20s a couple nights, so they had to turn off the water, but they gave us plenty of notice via text and when I checked in and even stopped by my campsite to make sure I knew. Um, I had filled my freshwater tank, so I was fine. The next campground I'm going to highlight is a Pima Tuning State Park in Ohio. Now, this has been on my list for a while to check out. It's not terribly far from Pittsburgh. It's within a couple hours, and I've heard great things about it. And so we started at the Ohio side. I, I haven't been to the Pennsylvania side yet, but I've heard the Ohio side was nicer, so I went there first. And it's an older state park. Um, the power pedestal was on the wrong side it's on the drive the passenger side not the driver's side not my favorite thing to have a power cable running through the campsite but apart from that it was really nice I was very close to the lake I didn't have a lakeside site but there were a number of lakeside sites um, I also really enjoyed the trees it, it felt like um, especially with early spring there were these ground cover flowers coming up and it was just pretty even with a lot of rain really a pretty campground we actually had an Ohio PA tabs tags and friends event there and what a group I'll tell you despite the rain we had a really lovely time I did bug out early because I was headed to Tennessee and realized I had planned too long of a drive for Sunday so I wanted to break that up a bit and head it out Saturday afternoon. But what a great campground. They have full hookup sites. I did not have a full hookup site there. Um, they're a little further from the lake. I wanted to be closer to the lake. So I got a site that just had electric. The next place I went to was Greenbrier Campground. Now this is my third stay there. It's right outside of Gatlinburg. It's in Pittman Center, Tennessee. And it is such a lovely campground. And I, I hesitate to call it an RV park. I would put it in the category of commercial campground because it still feels like a campground. You are along the riverside in many cases um, or you know, close to it. You have trees that just um, encircle the campground. It's really pretty. And boy, the, the facilities there are just spotless. They do such a great job. The staff is great. They've got a nice little camp store. And it's very convenient to the Greenbrier area of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And not a long drive to either Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge. This campground, however, is not cheap. It is pricier. But you're going to get that in the Gatlinburg or Pigeon Forge or Townsend area. None of the campgrounds are cheap. The cheapest place to stay is in the National Park, but since I was working, I needed to be someplace where I had signal. So this campground was great. The Wi-Fi was a little iffy. It wasn't as great as it usually has been. Um, 
but it was still usable for work. And I did have Verizon as a backup, but Verizon is sort of weak there too, so not great. When I checked out early, I went down to the Food City and parked in their parking lot for a couple hours and finished work down there and had great speeds. But um, overall, I love this campground. They were hit hard by a flash flood last year and had to evacuate a number of campers, but you couldn't tell at all. Um, I had a campsite right along the river and everything looked terrific. So it's a great campground. They do such a good job of taking care of it. I can't recommend it enough. After Greenbrier, I went to Elkmont in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Elkmont is partway between Gatlinburg and Cades Cove. It's, it's closer to the Gatlinburg end of the park. Um, it's not too far from Laurel Falls, if you're familiar with that area. And it's a nice, large campground um, right along a river with just trees and a river going through the campground. It's really, I can't tell you how lovely it is. Um, the, the sounds of nature were just awesome that weekend. Lots of peepers and the sound of the river. It was in the birds, lots of birds, lots of birds singing. I just can't tell you how enjoyable. It was so peaceful. I really got a lot of rest that weekend. Not typically what I do in a national park, but I needed it. And it was just so relaxing to have it be that quiet. In the middle of the afternoon, there weren't, you know, people screaming or anything like that. I just took the nicest nap. Now, it is a popular campground for families, so your mileage is going to vary on noise level, I'm sure. But overall, I found it to be a peaceful campground. One tip about that campground, if, you, if you're going for the quiet, make sure you choose a generator-free loop because there are some loops where they allow generators. After I left Alkma, I spent a week outside of Knoxville in Lenore City, Tennessee, camping at Yarberry Campground. Yarberry is a Tennessee Valley Authority TVA campground, and it's right on a big lake that is part of the Tennessee River system. The campground's actually on a peninsula into the lake, and it's just lovely. It's so well landscaped. If you're there in early April, you're going to be just overwhelmed by the beauty of all the blossoming dogwood trees. But anytime, it's just a pretty campground. The people running it for the last couple of years take such pride in making it a great place. Certain sites are available for up to a month, but they're not the best sites. Quite honestly, the best sites are overnight sites. So it's a really nice campground. Um, you know, typical picnic table, fire ring. You don't go there for amenities necessarily. You go there for just the, the setting. And it's just a pretty campground. Rocky was amused by the geese, and we enjoyed watching ducks and swans and listening to the different sounds of nature. It was a great campground. I highly recommend Yarberry. One of the things I really like about Yarberry is that the Verizon data signal speeds for those who work remotely are super fast. One of the fastest places I've ever worked. And also, it's easy to get DoorDash or Instacart delivered there because you're very close to Lenore City, which has a lot of dining and grocery options. If you're visiting Knoxville, Maryville, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, those areas, Yarbury is a really great campground. Um, there aren't many around Knoxville. Uh, this is probably the nicest one and the closest one to Knoxville. I I lived in Lenore City and Knoxville for a couple years, and the traffic is really uh, more intense than you would expect for such a mid-sized city. But Yarbury is easy off for both I-75 and I-40, and also the um, road that goes right into Townsend for the Smoky Mountains. From Yarbury, I headed north because I had some family things to do. I spent a night on the way at the Lebanon KOA, which is just outside of Cincinnati. It's a little north of Cincinnati. It's not too far off 71. The staff was very friendly and adamant that I contact them if there was anything at all that bothered me, whether it be noise or anything else. They insisted that I contact them immediately. Um, the facilities were in very nice condition. They had a really good-sized camp store there. 
and um, I set up, I pulled into my pull through site, connected to Water and Electric, and ordered DoorDash and enjoyed a nice, quiet evening there. As Rocky and I sat outside, we had so many people come up and talk to us. Now, that's common in a lot of campgrounds, but this seemed even more common. People were interested in the tab, but overall, people were just friendly. So it's a great campground, and I highly recommend it. After the Lebanon KOA and doing a couple nights mooch docking, I went on to East Harbor State Park. East Harbor State Park is right on Lake Erie. It's really a fantastic park. Um, if you haven't been there, it's, um, it's huge for one. Lots of campgrounds. Um, sites in loops A and B are among very nice shaded trees. I don't know why, but I haven't stayed there yet. And next time I go, I'm probably gonna try to stay in that area. The C and D loops are more open. So if you're a Starlink user, that's great. Um, but overall, the facilities are in good shape. The sites are a little closer together than some campgrounds, especially in the C loop. But I have a, a site there that gives me a nice big yard. It's sort of a special site. I'm not gonna tell you which one, but it's a great site. Um, Rocky loves it and there's a bathroom close to it there's actually this state park has laundry facilities in it not common in the ohio state parks so it's a good state park the data speeds are solid there if you're a verizon user and um, like i said if you're in the c and d loop it's a great spot for starlink it's convenient to marblehead it's convenient to the ferries to um, the islands there putin bay south bass island kelly's island and you're not too far from Sandusky if you're going to the amusement park or to Calamari for the day. Um, and you're also not terribly far from Toledo or Cleveland. It's, it's really easy drive from either location. Now, this last one is a location I've posted some pictures and videos on and people keep asking me where it is. And I think you're gonna be surprised when I tell you. It's in Moundsville, West Virginia. Now I bet, unless you're local, most of you have not heard of Moundsville, West Virginia. It's not, it's a typical Ohio Valley, probably former steel town. It is a small town and the campground sits on top of a hill, right on the ridge of a hill overlooking Moundsville. There are some interesting things in Moundsville. There's, you can do a tour of the old state penitentiary. Um, you can either do a self-guided tour or you can do the full tour, which I've heard is fantastic. There's also a historic site. It's the Grave Creek Mound site, and it's the largest burial mounds in North America. Um, so for those of you who are interested in history, this is a neat little town. There's also um, a lot of glass history here in the area. This campground, however, is, is brand new. And so the facilities are in perfect condition. The only thing I don't really like about the facilities is that the sewer outlet is like a foot and a half tall. So even the sewer risers don't create an even pathway to the sewer you have to lift the hose up a bit but that's really the only thing I don't care for about this campground the sites are decent size not huge um, you are a little closer together than a state park for example but the um, view is incredible it's very unique and when I put my drone up you can see all along this section of the Ohio Valley and the foothills of the Appalachians it's really pretty in the mornings, if there's a little moisture or humidity, the valley fills with fog, which is really neat to see. Um, this camp campground is part of a county park in Marshall County, West Virginia, and it has a lot of amenities. There's mountain biking, disc golf, there's an ice cream shop, there's a bar and grill, there's a zip line, a climbing wall, um, lots of really nice picnic shelters, hiking trails, and other things to do here, playgrounds. So I would imagine as summer kicks in, this will be a very popular park for families to come to. The prices are not cheap. Um, they're not glamping resort expensive, but they're not cheap. Um, I've seen that before in city parks or county parks, but you know, to be quite honest, it's a full hookup site and the facilities are brand new. So they're probably getting 
um, they're probably charging what it's worth. It's really a great campground. They also, if, if you don't have a camper yet, they have cabins and they have treetop luxury villas. I'm not sure what's in the treetop luxury villas, but they look really interesting. They look like little cabins in the trees. Um, so if you're looking for this campground, um, you're probably surprised. Now that this leads me to the tips about how I go about finding campgrounds. So when I look for a campground, it, it depends on what my objective for camping is to start with. Am I camping to be near something? Because my, my choice may be different if I want to be near a location or an attraction than if I'm just camping. Now, right now I'm just camping. My objective is to find somewhere that's enjoyable and somewhere that has a good data signal so that I can work remotely. I'm in the middle of that season right now. I'm not vacationing. Um, so for example, the Moundsville campground, I found by searching for campgrounds, I just honestly, in my spare time, when it's you know the middle of winter, nothing going on, I pull up campground apps like Campendium and RV Life, and I start looking for campgrounds in certain areas, maybe areas I haven't been to before, or even areas I have been, and looking at the different campgrounds, looking at the photos in those campgrounds, that's a big tip right there. Look at the photos, and if possible, try to figure out what site number. If I see a site that I really like, I try to figure out what site it is by looking at the photos, seeing if somebody's captioned it, or even doing a Google image search sometimes from it. But I'll also Google for campgrounds. I, I Google the campground I'm interested in, or I Google other campgrounds. There's a website, I think it's called Campsite Photos, that will show you photos of specific sites. And I've used that. That's really helpful to me in the Badlands. Um, I'll look at other people's blogs and videos to find campgrounds. But this campground I just stumbled across. And it was interesting because once I stumbled across it, I started getting Facebook ads for it. So it stuck with me as a place I wanted to check out. You can make a list. You know, I've done that before too, where I keep a, a OneNote notebook that has campgrounds I want to try or good sites. Um, so that, I do like Campendium um, because the, people post good pictures and a lot of times it's a site where people have similar tastes than mine. It's changed a little bit, but for the most part, still people who enjoy the same type of campgrounds, not necessarily the glamping resorts as much as the state parks and, and campgrounds with a view, quite honestly. This particular campground, though, there were no pictures on Campendium, and I don't think there, there may have been a couple on RV Life, but none that would have led me here. It was more the ads of the park itself and the park's website. I also pulled it up on Google Earth and looked at it and could tell, based on its location, it was going to have a unique view. And so that's how I ended up at this campground. Yarbury is similar. I needed a campground near Knoxville, and so I looked on Campendium. It got great reviews on Campendium. And I started pulling up Google Earth, and I, I could tell where it was located. I'm familiar with the area. And I knew it was going to be a pretty campground. So look for... Look for campgrounds on a map, on an app, on um, Google search, and then use Google Earth to help you determine if it's going to be a pretty campground or not. And then even do a Google image search of the campground, and you can get some, some views of what it might look like. If you're camping for an attraction, sometimes you don't get the prettiest campground, you know? Greenbrier in Gatlinburg, I got word of mouth recommendation from a couple friends. East Harbor, we had an event there for Pennsylvania and Ohio tabs, tags and friends, and I enjoy that stay there. It's just a convenient place to camp. As far as the Lebanon KOA, that was a word of mouth recommendation. The Fancy Gap KOA was a word of mouth recommendation, as was the Withful KOA by several people. So a lot of these campgrounds I've experienced via word of mouth or via the recommendations of other sites. A great, if you're not part of a, a camping group like Midwest Tabs, Southeast Tabs, I think there's a Northeast Tabs group, there's Pennsylvania and Ohio Tabs, Tags and Friends, do a Facebook search for those sites because those groups go tend to know where good campgrounds are and tend to go to them. And it's a great way to learn from other owners what campsites they like. If you're going to U-Camp, ask the people there where they like to camp. Those are my tips for picking a campground. I'm curious what other people do to find campgrounds that are interesting. Um, there are guides out there, like Good Sam has a guide. It's a huge 
book, I've had one of those. My friend Bill gave me a great Colorado campground book that has all sorts of details about the campgrounds in Colorado. And there are other ways you can find great campgrounds. I'd love to hear how you find them. I, I'm sure there are experienced campers out there. I know my friend Don finds the best campgrounds and does a really good job at picking sites. And my friend Alex is like the best I think I know at picking a site. So when it comes to picking a specific site, if I can't find a photo and I'm just dealing with a map, I may look for a site that's close to a bathroom. I may not, depends on my mood, quite honestly. I might try to imagine which site is gonna have a good view based on Google Earth, if I can do sort of a matchup of Google Earth and the campground. I look for space around campsites. Is there more space or not much space? Google Earth can also show you like, is there a water tower next to your site? Is there, you know, a drop off? big huge drop off, those type of things. So I try to use Google Earth to augment a campground map when possible. It's not always an easy thing to do, but I do try to do that. And then there's always the site I mentioned earlier, campsite photos, and they actually will have stars next to they, the sites they think are the, the best sites at a campground. There are a lot more YouTube videos that do tours of campgrounds too. And you can pick out your site from those. I have done that a couple times. So there are lots of options out there for picking campsites. These are just the first 10 I've camped at this year. So this is just how I go about it. It's not the most scientific method in the world. I'd love to hear where have you camped that you would recommend this year or last year even. And how did you go about finding it? If you would share that in the comments below, I think it would be super helpful for everybody watching the video. Well, I hope that you found this helpful and that some of you got some ideas for campgrounds or how you might go about finding a campground from watching this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.